files and file manipulation. From the terminal environment, there are six basic things you can do to a file. You can create it, you can edit it, you can copy it, you can move it or rename it, you can view it, and you can delete it. File manipulation is fundamental to Linux system administration. In this video, you'll learn to do all those things. To Linux, everything is a file. This bears repeating. To Linux itself, everything is a file. Even though directories and inode tables are somewhat different for speed, to Linux, they are files. Physical devices are files. Everything is a file. Here, look, I'll show you. This is the slash dev directory. All the device drivers for the entire system live here. Every one of these represents a physical device. Here's memory. Here's floppy disk. Here are all of our various possible terminals. You can send data to them like files. You read data from them like files. Linux treats them like files. They are files. That's the Unix way, and that's how Linux does it. Keep this in mind. It's a very important concept to understand how Linux works. So what is a file? When we talk about a file, we're using an analogy. What we're really picturing is a physical stack of papers all bundled up into a file with a name on it. That's actually not far from the truth. A file is really a combination of things. It's an entry in the directory table for the directory it lives in. That entry, along with other things, includes the inode number. The inode number is an entry in the inode table. The inode table entry gives you, among other things, the addresses of the data blocks in the file. So what is a data block? A data block is a sequential series of storage addresses on the volume. One block is the minimum size for any file on that file system. Block size is set when you initialize or format the volume. In the ext4 file system, the default size for a block is 4 kilobytes, or kibibytes if you are pedantic. But they can go from 1 kilobyte to 64 kilobytes. So what does a data block look like? Well, like this. Here's a single 4K data block displayed using the hex dump utility. We're not going to cover this utility. It's not something you use every day. But it does let us see the raw data byte by byte in two-digit hexadecimal numbers. This is what Linux sees. These are the offset from the beginning of the file. These are the bytes themselves. And here's what it translates to in human readable form. Blocks come in groups of various sizes and extents and whatnot. Most of this is for file system performance. It's set up and maintained automatically and not something you as a system administrator need to deal with regularly. This is good because file system architecture and programming are whole subjects unto themselves. There are two file name traditions in the terminal environment that GUI applications often ignore. In the old days, you could call your files whatever you wanted. And if you told a program to open a file, it would try. You could cat executable programs to your screen for page after page of gibberish until your terminal froze. As always, things are more complicated now. It is traditional for file names to have a period at the end and some kind of extension to tell the user what the file is. The other tradition is that Unix and Linux file names do not contain spaces. Since 1984, GUI app designers have hated that. So when you're at the command line and you run into a file that has spaces in the file name, you can use a backslash space to tell bash that there's a space there. This works for any character that is special to bash and shouldn't be in a file name. If there's more than one in a row, you can enclose the file name in single quotes to prevent bash from trying to interpret the file name into commands. We're gonna take a short break. And when we come back, we will talk about creating files with touch and nano. <laughs> 